come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the movie review and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, because we're on a quest to conquer the world. And the seas. Yeah. (laughs) And yes, these are the internet radio superstars. Holly. Michaela. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by Colin. What depths did you take us to tonight? We sunk to the depths of Dagon. 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 From the year. Uh, 2001. 2001. I was surprised. Yeah. This was right? Was it 2001? Movie. Am I saying this wrong? No, it's I think you're correct. Was, I think, when it was actually released. Okay. Directed by? Uh, Stuart Gordon. The oh. famed Stuart Gordon. Yes. Who hasn't great. come to the freak show as much as I thought he would have. Uh, we did. Uh, we did From yeah. Beyond. From Beyond. We did. Reanimator, I think, okay. way back in way the day. Way back in the gotcha. day. Castle Freak. Oh, didn't you hate that movie? Holly? I you famously hate, hate movie. I Castle famously Freak? hate that movie. Yeah. yeah. Robot Jocks. Oh, I wasn't here for that. Yeah. That's right. You did do that. Space Truckers. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Space Truckers. Yeah. I forgot about that one. Yeah. I brought that one. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if we're forgetting anything, yep. but yeah. Mm-hmm. Stuart Gordon um, got around and mm-hmm. uh, uh, directed movies in a lot of different genres. Did a lot of dramas at the end there of his career, kind of, uh, mm-hmm. I think, prior to Dagon, right? Anybody mm-hmm. see, uh, was it Edmund with uh, mm-hmm. William H. Macy? No. No. I have not. Duck with uh, Stephen Ray. No. That was the one where that he one. hits, uh, he's driving home and he hits this girl and she gets stuck in his windshield and he no. just drives home with her. It's based on a true story. What? <laughs> I'm, and you said this is not a horror movie. Sounds like a horror movie to me. Oh, why didn't you watch that? Right. Yeah. No, he did a lot of stuff, but they yeah. all kind of flew under the radar. His yeah. um, notoriety, I guess, comes from uh, the 80s when yeah. he tackled H.P. Uh, Lovecraft stories. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think is like the most prolific H.P. Lovecraft uh, adapter in cinema history. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, I mean, how many has he done? He, uh, Reanimator. Yeah, from Beyond. Yeah. That was um, one, wasn't it? Castle Freak. Yeah. Um, Dagon. Mm-hmm. He did an episode of Masters of Horror that was Dreams of the from the Witch House, cool. um, which has Ezra Godden, the star mm-hmm. of this one, in it. I mean, he's most famous Reanimator, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Like, Definitely. It has to be, yeah. Yeah, he was, uh, um, he was a theater director. In Chicago, I with, can see um, that. the organic theater, and then mm-hmm. broke into movies with Reanimator in 1985, and that movie was so extreme uh, in in for its day that it went out unrated. I remember it was like one of, like there was a commercial on TV. I remember it said mm-hmm. like this film is not rated, you know, and most movies yeah right. were at that point. And I can't remember if it said like it couldn't even show you scenes from the movie, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean that, you know, once you've seen Reanimator, it'll stick with you. Yes, it does stick. <laughs> uh, I've seen yeah. it once, and I'm, I'm still good. I'm still good. Me too. On it, you know, too. I've seen it one yeah. time just yeah. to see it. Yep. And I'm like, you know what? I don't need to see it again. Yeah. Oh, I've it's seen like, that movie a bunch. I it, love it. It's <laughs> it's funny. It's gross. Yes. It crosses the line, which I think because he was. Um, because that made that movie, you know, was that it would just, it would go across the line of taste, like mm-hmm. all the time, uh, that became the thing that he latched on to mm-hmm. and then would do that in like every subsequent movie yeah. and including this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, I found my thing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you found something. It, it's funny because we were, as we were watching the movie down here last night, Holly was eating so like pizza, eating pizza. Yeah. while the movie started. And we were already like, okay, Stu- Stuart Gordon. So you know it's going to be like goopy and gross, yeah. right? So I ate that so fast. But then we also <laughs> saw produced by Brian Yuzna. Mm-hmm. And I ate it and that, Yeah, and that was like, oh boy, as if that's not, like, as if Stuart shit. Gordon isn't gross enough, let's get the guy from that did society yeah, in yeah. here. Oh my god! I scarfed my pizza. Like I'm simultaneously <laughs> excited and also like feel my stomach turn a little bit when I see Brian Yesna's name right? come up. Like you're like, oh, oh, oh it's <laughs> gonna be gross. Yeah. Did they? Um, yeah, because this was like a big reteaming, right? Because mm-hmm. Brian Yesna did he produce later Stuart Gordon movies? He wasn't on like the 
first uh, like set of, you know, because those were Empire Pictures, Charles Band, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? And I think this was actually supposed to be made uh, as a full moon movie <laughs> in the 80s, but somehow like the funding never came together for it or something like that. Something tells me they didn't quite get the funding they needed for this <laughs> round either. Yeah. I mean, that's why they kind of, it's like they retreated to Spain to do it. It's a very American story. It takes place, uh, it's uh, based on H.P. Lovecraft's Shadow over Innsmouth. Mm-hmm. Um, that was the original title of the movie title. When, yeah. when they were going to do it in uh, uh, Full Moon was going to do it. Yeah, It takes place in a fictional uh, coastal town in Massachusetts. But I think for budget reasons, well, I think what actually happened. That um, was supposed to be in Massachusetts. Yes. Yeah. Well, no, in the original mo- the original story. Oh, takes place in Massachusetts. I was like, wait a second. No. Well, Brian Yuzna, um, he at some point uh, became um, a producer. He uh, entered into a deal um, with Filmax, I think, which is a Spanish outfit and then formed Fantastic Factory. Which was basically he was trying to do his like, uh, you know, uh, New World Pictures or something like that, you know, become his own little Roger Corman in Spain where he would fund these movies. They'd be produced locally, uh, shot in Spain. The first one, I think, was Faust. Mm-hmm. Do you remember? It was an adaptation of a comic book. Oh, what? <laughs> uh, where it was, yeah, it was. Um, but we know about all these, the Spain and all the like kind of behind the scenes right from the jump because we counted how many I was gonna say, uh, production studio oh logos. What were we at? 12? 12. 12. But there was one point where there was five on the screen at once. Yeah. Yeah. But it, Colin told us when we watched this movie, there was a full one to two minutes of, of production <laughs> title cards and he was not exaggerating. Yeah, 12. This. Yeah. yeah. They got their money from all over mm-hmm. the place in order to try and put this together. Mm-hmm. I think it was a dream project uh, for Stuart Gordon. Like I said, I, I, th- I think he'd been chasing this for a number of years, decades mm-hmm. to try and get it made. And um, it ultimately, I think like it played like at film festivals and then I think probably premiered on the sci-fi channel, if I am not mistaken. Yeah, I had never even heard of this movie. Uh, this Wait. movie just got... Before told, t- yeah, before doing this pod, I had never heard, heard of this movie. I, I was like, okay. Dagon, okay, sounds like vaguely fantasy yeah. based. You but know? it's funny you say that because just looking at it, I was like, I guarantee this was on the sci-fi channel. Yeah. <laughs> guarantee it. Back when they would like buy movies yeah. like yeah. dog soldiers. Yes. And, you know, yeah. I think this was one of the the ones like that that they was like, we're going to premiere it on the sci-fi yeah. channel. Back before it was Siffy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Because I mean, I guess the film market had changed so much that yeah, even back then it was like there was no real theatrical mm-hmm. avenue for a movie like this even though his other, his previous movies had gone to theaters um it's a very i'm gonna say this is the rainiest movie ever made this is one of those movies yeah. that like it makes you feel cold yeah like the whole movie makes you feel cold and f- i feel bad for the actors in this movie my god just the like we've yeah. and this is a common thread with Stuart gordon movies we talked about and from beyond we feel bad for those actors because what ken foree was down in the basement in his underwear and like waist deep water like they're always putting people in yeah. horrible positions in these movies but yeah. the end result is pretty great so maybe it's worth it you know yeah they're yeah, really sopping wet yeah. it feels like it's cold at some yes. point you can actually see the extras breath so you're like okay these night yeah. shoots you know yeah. with the rain machines going which i'm sure is a logistical challenge for any filmmaker oh my God, yes. and they have rain in every yes, single every scene, scene. <laughs> oh. uh, um, it just makes you happy that you're warm and dry right now <laughs> i know kind of like have you recovered <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, like, yeah, give me a blanket right i feel um, everything's fine we're fine we're warm <laughs> everything's fine <laughs> well the original um hp lovecraft story shadow mm-hmm. over Innsmouth, was written i believe in the 20s okay and um, I know you're probably, you know, you've just seen the movie, so you're like, well, how close does it follow mm-hmm. uh, the plot line right. of Shadow Over Innsmouth? Um, that one is about, I can't remember if there's a guy, he's like a college student, they're always college students yeah, in, always. in Lovecraft mm-hmm. stories, who um, becomes fascinated with this town. I can't remember if at the beginning it's implied that like he's from there or has some kind of familial connection and he researches it. It was like apparently the FBI had shown up and like 
torpedoed with a, a submarine it torpedoed a reef they said it was a bootlegging operation and he's like okay i'm actually gonna go check this out like years later what's going on in this town and then he arrives there's like a grocery clerk i think who's gone missing and he meets an old guy who tells him the the strange history of the town and he checks into a hotel and then there's a pursuit and it's kind of there's elements from mm-hmm. it but it's a like a bigger scale version mm-hmm. this is the budget version right. of uh the story and it adds like a bunch of um characters and uh, uh and scenes that aren't in the original version was but, it as filthy in the original <laughs> um it was heavily atmospheric so okay. yeah i mean it kind of felt grimy the whole idea i think is that the town is old and has never really been kept up because mm-hmm. Yeah, that tracks. The people who live there don't really care about... Uh, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> because they're not really people. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I think it was... I don't remember if it was the first. I don't think it was, but it was uh, part of H.P. Lovecraft's uh, Cthulhu Mythos, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, which I think, you know, basically can... My three favorites are The Call of Cthulhu, uh, The Shadow Over Innsmouth, and At the Mountains of Madness. Mm -hmm. I'd recommend those are the three that you want to read if you want to kind of get this, like the cosmology Mm -hmm. of Lovecraftian deities. Um, There's also a short story called Dagon, but it has nothing to do really with this. I actually really like the Lovecraft short stories. Maybe, I don't know if it's like an attention span thing or what, but I always find he ends them right at the right time. I'm always like, oh shit. Like Pikmin's model is one of my favorites. So you should, now that you're like fully developing your art career, you should, you should read Pikmin's model because it's about an artist. Oh, okay. So I think you would dig that that one. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever get the impression with H.P. Lovecraft that like once you start reading his short his short mm-hmm. fiction not in his stories that mm-hmm. aren't really um, like the Cthulhu based yeah. stuff I mean yeah. even though that kind of seeps right. into a lot of his shorts um, that he was Stephen King before Stephen like Stephen kind King of. like yeah, ends yeah. his story his short stories in the same kind of yes. way it builds to a and then a crescendo and it's done and, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah and I think that's why I like them because it's just like it's more impactful, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would, if they put together like a Lovecraft, like anthology TV show where they did a bunch of the short stories, I think that could be really cool. Well, didn't but, they? Did well, they? there was Lovecraft Country. Yeah. But that wasn't. It was like sideways. That it, it would incorporate elements from the, uh, yeah. the all the stories. See, no, I want like an anthology type. like where Just adapt just, them. Yeah. Yeah. Individual yeah. stories. But yeah. I kind of imagine it, that would still be expensive. Oh, I think that's sure. the problem with Lovecraft stuff is it's always so like uh, atmospheric and all this like kind of pageantry to things that seems yeah, to be they expensive. Yeah, that HBO money. That's what yeah. they should have done. Seriously, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, even I mean, just thinking on like how you would do I well I know Guillermo del Toro has been talking for years he wants to do At the Mountains of Madness I'll believe it when I see it dude right? I read Seriously. the script it was out on you know it's like okay it basically kind of sort of gets the story but it goes more you know it's more plot and that's mm-hmm. not really what it's uh, it's the you know I don't know the cosmology is what you really take away from right you know the the feeling that you're very small mm-hmm. and there are these mm-hmm. things out there that if they shrugged wrong, you know, or coughed in their sleep, they would kill you mm-hmm. psychically. Uh, you know, right. um, yeah. the, the things that created uh, man and came to this world, you know, mm-hmm. trillions of years ago and lay sleeping somehow under the uh, earth waiting for the stars to align mm-hmm. so they can uh, exert their influence on the surface again. And that's kind of, I guess, what you get a peek at it it's right. always a thing i guess in lovecraft stuff you always get like just a little peek at it mm-hmm. and then it drives you mad right <laughs> well and I, it's not related to the cthulhu mythology but we all we did an episode on color out of space yeah and oh, that right. yeah. was yeah. fan we loved that, that oh, movie we loved so that movie. Yeah. um fantastic. but yeah and that i mean if richard stanley made more than one movie every 25 years maybe he could start catching up to Stuart gordon just keep adapting the lovecraft yeah. stuff, well, he but. was supposed to do oh i can't even remember but he was going to do another lovecraft story but then he there he was involved in the me too right uh, thing, so right. kind of shut uh, mm-hmm. that down so we're still waiting i guess guillermo yes. del toro right is the next person who's mm-hmm. going to do a hp lovecraft story so this one uh for folks who haven't read the the story and are unfamiliar with the plot uh who are our characters 
Well, actually, these aren't the, the characters yeah. from the story. So who are the characters in the movie? So what was the main guy's name? Paul, Paul. slash Pablo. Paul slash Pablo and <laughs> Barbara Bangs. Barbara, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, they, I was like, I got this part. Yeah, okay, yeah. you got this part. <laughs> they're like having sexy time on a boat. Seems like a great day. Well, they're kind of, like, she's having sexy time. Yeah. He's having uh, like freak out about my stocks time. Yes. Because yeah. uh, he has like a bad dream about a mermaid that like jolts him awake. Don't we all? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what did he say to her though when she was yeah. like about to go down him? It was like the worst thing you could ever say. And he's and like, that... I don't find any of this enjoyable. Yeah. yeah. Oh my yeah. God. She was like going down on him and he was yeah. just like, I don't find any of this enjoyable because they had just wow. been talking about how they're suddenly rich. Yes. And she was like, he, she, she was like, oh, this it's like overnight we're suddenly rich. And he was just like, I don't like it. But he said, but he was thinking about that. And he said the worst thing at the worst time. There's no coming back. There's from no, that. she <laughs> like jumped off of him. Yeah. Like, no, dude, you're done. Like, and you then done. that poor woman had to still be in a boat with him. Like, Ugh. see, this is the dangers of going this, out on a but boat. See, this it made it completely justifiable that she threw his laptop. In yeah. The ocean. Oh yeah. Like one hundred percent. Right. And like, why is he worried about the stocks if they are rich? I don't Isn't know. Isn't that well, good? I guess if the stocks go down, your money. But then goes sell with it. it so that you're uh, cash out. Uh-huh. Like, yeah, what is I, the problem here? Um. Yeah, yeah, she she throws his laptop in the ocean because he won't stop checking his stocks. Right, um, but after that comment, I which how too, is so. he check, checking? This, do they uh, have Wi Fi on they this get, boat? They get satellite. Yeah, okay. They're, I'm they're like, but their internet. phones don't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, that works. You just have to take it. Um, and what, first jump scare of the movie for me. There's other people on this boat. <laughs> what? Yeah. They're like uh, new rich, so they've got rich friends. Right? Yeah, or, yeah, but they are older than them. Like this is an older couple. Yeah, that's like, like, why don't we take you out on our boat? It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's implied that um, how it's Howard and Vicky mm-hmm. are the older couple, and it's implied that Howard was their financial backer. Yeah, in whatever this project is that made him rich. Right. Yeah. Which I'm still fuzzy. Did they actually say? Because the, no, they never say no. what okay. it is. Because at first it sounded like sciency, and then it sounded like businessy, and I was like, okay, I really don't right. know what this guy's doing. Right. Yeah. Okay. I assumed it's a software company. It's mm-hmm. 2001. Yeah. And right. Like That's very the, true. Yeah. But right. Howard was clearly the financial backer. Yes. yes. And so they're yeah. off the coast of España mm-hmm. because this is Paul says. Okay, so here's the thing the when i first saw this movie and i guess we're just going to talk about it now maybe it's spoilers right it's okay we're just going to jump in there are moments that on a rewatch you go like oh the screenwriters actually did build this into the plot but like i was not picking up on it uh the first time around right mm-hmm. um paul is complaining on this scene that he has been feeling weird for the past couple weeks, right? Ever mm. since they've come to this area, his stomach is upset. He has um, pains. Yeah, but yeah. specifically, he's got bruises on his stomach, right? Mm-hmm. Which like meant ribs, nothing yeah. to me then. Right. And even later, it was like, it, I still didn't connect it. Yeah. But, you know, on a rewatch, you're like, oh, okay, oh, okay they are yeah, laying yeah. that in. Right. Like, right off the bat. Um and he's like popping drama me. And so I'm like, okay, he just gets like motion sick. Yeah. Like, I, I feel for you, bro. Cause I also get motion. Sick. And this is a pretty small boat. It's easy to get motion sick on a small boat. Yeah. You know, and yeah. he, he says that his mom, his mother was from Spain, mm-hmm. didn't let him learn Spanish and wouldn't let him come back basically. But this is a uh, vacation where they're actually going back to his mother's country. Right. Mm-hmm. All these are, Red flag, yes. apparently, but not right. a given a uh, exclamation mm-hmm. point or something. That, right. I don't know. Did you guys? No, like, I didn't pick up on any of no. this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it just went yep. it was like, yeah. okay, it's there, but it, mm-hmm. it, it was wasn't so underscored, like, underlined or anything. It was just the smallest. It was minutia and I just wasn't even paying attention mm-hmm. to it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'm just making sure it wasn't me because yep. later it was like, what? Huh? Because later on, it's revealed mm-hmm. that, of course, you know, he uh, does have a familial connection to this area specifically and the people who uh, live in the mm-hmm. town. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a shipwreck um, because they hear chanting off in the distance in Imboca. Mm-hmm. Imboca being the Spanish uh, word for in mouth. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yep. Okay. Isn't Boca Raton, Florida, like rat mouth? Yeah, like, it's you know, that's what like... it means. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. rat yeah. mouth. Yeah. It was something mouth. Yeah, yeah I looked at yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Yeah, it's something. Yeah, 
But yeah, Disgusting. okay, so in's mouth, the in mouth, uh, yeah. mocha. Um, and we see the coastal town and it seems um, old, very old, mm-hmm. like um, stone uh, walls along the outside. It's a of cool the... looking town. Yeah. It's yeah. Very cool. Um, well, even you're saying from the uh, from the coast or even when we get into it, is there? Well, I mean, because it's just like an old like stone town. Right. Uh, it, just, it looks cool. It looks like a... Um, like a really old Spanish fishing town. Mm-hmm. And it just yeah. has that neat look about it. It has um, an atmosphere a a that I don't <laughs> think that you can buy. It's one of those things. It's like it feels like they filmed on like a real old yeah. it's a place in Galicia, in Galicia, Spain. Okay. I was like, it looks like a ghost town. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And I don't think that that was staged. Right. <laughs> yeah. It looks uh, dilapidated. I mean, I'm sure once you mm-hmm. clear people off, it's like you get rid of any of the signs of modern mm-hmm. you know, living. And it's like, What's wow. What's it called? Uh, I'm not sure what the town was, but it's in Galatia, mm-hmm. um, Spain. And I think they sh- they filmed in several different places uh, along the Catalonia, maybe. Am I mm-hmm. saying this wrong? Or Spanish mm-hmm. listeners are like, come on. But... Um, so there's a shipwreck because there's a reef mm-hmm. out there and a, a storm, storm. Mm-hmm. shows up. This is 2001 era. Bad CGI storm. It's bad. It's really bad. There's a lot of other CGI that has to do heavy lifting in this movie. So I yeah. get it. You got to cut the corner somewhere. So. Yeah. yeah. It, does it is kinda... 2001. But it did, it did make me go, ooh, this is going to be a rough watch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I remember these uh, movies on the sci-fi channel. Yes. That had, um. So, in this, I think Vicky is uh, mortally, not mortally, she's seriously injured. Mm-hmm. Her leg is trapped uh, when I uh, the boat is dashed upon the rock. Because she's in the lower part of the boat where everyone else is up on the deck. So, yeah, she gets kind of like pinned where the, the bottom of the boat kind of gets pushed up against the rock. So, her leg is like pinched and uh, it's filling with water. That's cool. Mm-hmm. So... So they're going to drown. So mm-hmm. we have to go get help. And mm-hmm. so uh, Paul and Barbara strike out mm-hmm. on the raft to go to the mainland. So God, I did appreciate this, I guess, on the rewatch. It's like this movie. Um, like, did you get the sensation that it like once it gets going, it just kind of keeps going? I was going to say this movie moves at an insane pace, but I appreciate it. Like, I th- I like it. Um, I mean, even what we're talking about right now, these scenes happen very quickly. Like we're not on the boat with them for a very long time before this shit goes south and they're already on the lifeboat. It's quick. And then it's just a chase movie for an hour, which I appreciate. But yeah, it's once he hits land, man, it it just keeps going. Mm -hmm. I mean, they find, um, and I think it starts raining mm-hmm. like at this point and continues for the rest of the movie. Mm-hmm. The dampest movie ever. I swear to yes. God, it really Every, is. even when he goes indoors, there's like dripping, there's puddles, yes. there's water in, in rooms. It's mm-hmm. just like, yeah. yeah. Um, so he goes to uh, uh, find help. They meet a priest um, with webbed fingers. Yeah. That there's l- these little subtleties hinting at like, what's going to be revealed later that I find interesting. Mm -hmm. So did you, I guess uh, you're saying you guys didn't know uh, about the movie. I had to look up the town and it's just beautiful. (laughs) Oh, it is beautiful. It's really nice. Combaro. Yeah. What? Combaro. Combaro. Yeah. Okay. So that's great. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. So they grayscaled the shit out of it or painted uh, the roofs and all that to take all the color out of it. It's a lovely town. Yeah. (laughs) Well, there you go. Cool. Uh, Movie magic. Like, now I want to go there because it just looks lovely. Let's go there and then we'll do those things where you take a photo of all the filming locations. We'll find all the scenes from this movie and then I'll lay down and pretend like I have tentacle legs. Yeah. We should go. go. Yeah. I guess it is possible that those are sets like built on a backlog somewhere yeah, of these alleys and stuff but it feels like mm-hmm. i mean if it's if somebody well, I mean, I, built there was, that I, I saw a few more pictures and those those alleys i was like they I, look yeah. okay. they look like the yeah. but they made them look very run down yeah, yeah. okay they were very they're much more clean. probably shot at night but just a few big spotlights they're much more clean shady. in the photos yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks much more pleasant yes. <laughs> um so um yeah he um 
He gets help, but it, it's the strange. Uh, so oh, yeah, that's what priest I was with ask web you. fingers. If yeah. you so yeah. you didn't know what this movie no. was well, about. Well, you you had said last week like. You, you had made a people. fish people <laughs> and you, you had made like a humanoids of the deep reference. And so I was yeah. like, well, I'm always down for that because uh, as much as I love aquatic horror movies, we got to stop doing the like alien method of just like we're trapped in a thing underwater mm-hmm. and something's going to kill us because there's so many more horrors to explore yeah. in the ocean. Like so coastal yeah. horror. Yeah. Like, I love coastal Instead horror. Instead of us going to the ocean, bring the ocean to us, you yeah. know, like, and so I'm like, I love humanoids of the deep. So I'm like, give me another one. So I was down for it. Mm-hmm. I, I got to say, when we saw the priest with the web fingers, I thought about this sounds like something that, if I saw this, if I saw a priest with web fingers, right, I would definitely come tell you guys about it. Like the next time we oh, did a podcast with guys, I saw this <laughs> priest and like he looks like he had fucking web fingers. Right. What is that all about? Right. Because I can't, you can't say anything to the person or in the moment. So you got to save that and then right. find a safe space later to be like, this is weird, right? <laughs> like <laughs> if, it was, if it was yeah. me, I'd be like, oh yeah, you go ahead. I just yeah. have to like one man, like, yeah. Bro. Barbara, <laughs> fingers. fingers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, actually, she sees it. Does she see it? She sees. Oh, she's it. the it's, one that saw it. It's and it's after Paul has already left on the oh, boat to go back and right. try and rescue. Okay, yeah. Yeah. that makes yeah. more sense. Yeah, and he's like, "You could go to the hotel," and it's like, like, "Oh, oh man, shit. this guy's yeah." Is, yeah. She's yeah. like, "Fuck, yeah, <laughs> that's not normal." Yeah. So I think she goes to the hotel, and there's a guy there who just kind of looks like Lurch and stands, yeah. you know, and then she's uh, overpowered by both the priest and him. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, well, she's out of the movie, right? So we're, good. Yeah. we're switching mm-hmm. back to Paul, and Paul uh, d- finds out that uh, Howard and, and Vicky are no longer on the boat because mm-hmm. we saw something of what happened, mm-hmm. which was... Um, the The water became, like, inky? Like, yeah, like you can't yeah. see through because it's like oil on the top almost. Yeah it's, yeah, it's yeah, it's like inky, oily. And she's saying there's something in the water. Yeah. And it's like, oh, and fuck. It, <laughs> like clearly something like attacks her and then it cuts away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like squid ink or something yeah. like yeah. that. Some kind of aquatic thing. Yeah. Why don't we have more squid horror movies? Squids are fucking terrifying. terrifying. Like, See, this is, I, I've been wanting to do this. Yeah. Really. Like, this is, you know, like I was trying to dream up a squid horror movie for a while mm-hmm. because yeah. there was a video that I saw of one crawling across and uh, the so deck scary. of a ship. They're so scary. Right. And it like squeezes through the oh, like, yeah. porthole. The tiniest hole. Yeah. And the movement. It's of a squid horrifying. is like I'm like how horrifying. can people aren't you know, doing right. something and they're really intelligent they're really smart which is terrifying too like yeah. I want yeah give me like a like a cat and mouse horror movie with a squid and like maybe a a, a submarine or whatever yeah but there's little things like they have a complicated door system and it figures out the door and then the doors open and they're like oh open so the door you know they, like yeah. give me because like they it, can come out of water yeah exactly yeah, yeah. oh my god like and they I, can push I, like I guess it's because they can distort and disfigure themselves. Yes. It's like a big ball of. They have no bones. Yeah. Yeah, and they can just squeeze it. It's like mm-hmm. an intelligent. Uh, mm-hmm. What do you call a squeeze ball? The stress mm-hmm. relief. Yeah. Uh, balls. Stress relief balls. Yeah. Oh my god! I found out. <laughs> I fell down. Now I'm trying to think. Like, who can we get to direct this? That it right. would be good. Right. Like, because unfortunately, get now it's going to be very CGI. It's going to be really yeah. CGI, right. and that's not what I want. Right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. The, 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 the Guillermo del Toro. Like, I know he's been thinking about it for yeah. years. Right. So yeah. he has spent. A lot of time trying to, you know, that's the horror. Gonna, I think of it gonna, is the sh- the, fi- the 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 sea creature. Yeah, the, the aquatic, you know, whatever. Except, yeah, I like Guillermo, but also like, is he gonna make it a scary squid movie, or is he gonna make it like a romance on a submarine? Like, look how know, beautiful his, this fucking monster is. Shut his the fuck script up. is a, the the script that I read. It was like an action movie, and gotcha. it wasn't really horror. It was like okay. aliens. Oh. But See, that's the problem creature. with aquatic horror. Stop yeah. doing alien Stop movies doing underwater. Oh, my God. Yeah. I fell down an Instagram rabbit hole of this guy that owns all these different octopi. Uh, and he'll do, like, challenges with them where he'll give them, like, a, one of their favorite treats in a jar and yeah. then put it in the tank and it just goes over and it unscrews the jar and reaches it. it. Yeah, 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 and he'll yeah. even be like, she's never seen a jar before. Right. I'm give her one. And I'm like... They're- they're horrified. Crazy smart. Yeah, there's so much horror content right here. Yeah, yeah. Mine it, and they're spiteful. Yeah, and they were. They are. He's, 
he they, said that like there's one you've probably watched the same guy where he's like this one doesn't like me she's gonna spray me as soon yeah. as i reach in and she like inks and she spits at him like he's like we don't have a good relationship but this other one i can pet her <laughs> yeah. it's colin these videos are fucking fast yeah, yeah, and like yeah, and they're yeah, small yeah, 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 yeah and like out in the wild they'll yeah. just like punch a fish just because yeah. they don't like it right yeah, yeah, yeah. they're yeah. spiteful it's why don't we have like why don't we have like a horror movie based on like a pirate ship and yeah. just do the classic like yeah. sea monster pirate ship scenario Seriously. You know, speaking of that, I think Davy Jones in uh, Pirates of the Caribbean yeah. 2 was probably the best. It was like that. That kind of provoked that yeah. uh, revulsion. Amazing yeah. character I literally, design. Yeah. I literally just watched a video the other day. They're like, "Can we talk about how good that CGI it's still is? Yeah. It's the tentacles are always moving on their own. Just it's like still fantastic. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was good. It was yeah. so also, good. Now that I'm, th- I'm sitting here thinking, like there was a version of uh, it was. Because, I mean, obviously Shadow Outer Innsmouth has been adapted um, here and there several times. And the most recent was one that came out a couple of years ago. It had was it Jocelyn Donahue was in it. It took place in Florida. It was her and um, who's the Mumblecore guy, uh, Drinking Buddies. Um, oh. Oh. Um, yep. Yep. <laughs> Mumblecore guy. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That guy. Oh, that guy. Drinking Buddies. And, yeah. uh, I love Drinking Buddies. Uh, oh, man. Movie. Okay. The, yeah. We're all, everyone's he's punching a tall, their lanky yeah, guy yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he directed Drinking Buddies, right? Yeah. Yep, yep. Shit. God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> but they're in a movie. I can't yeah. remember what it was called, but it was basically like a really stripped down version yeah. of uh like Shadow Over Insmith. Um so and actually we watched a long time ago a movie called The Mora, uh, t- uh a child's tale of the supernatural or Mm-hmm. And it lo- like was kind of a variation on this idea mm-hmm. that, you know, a traveler goes to a isolated town that has its own religion and the people aren't quite human there because Paul finds out that uh, there's the esoteric order of Dagon is mm-hmm. what's worshipped here in, 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 in Boca. Which if you think about it, this is the same plot, just different monsters as City of the Dead. A college student goes Very to the town smart. in Massachusetts yeah. to see what the fuck is up for their research, yep. and the people are not human. I love this story, apparently. Yeah. I'm all in on I know, this, this is my favorite H.P. Yeah. Lovecraft yeah. story. Because yeah. I, I think this is like the first one. I mm-hmm. think there can't be. I mean, he did it in the 20s. That's yeah. the, the, the 20th century. Mm-hmm. There had to have been yeah. you know, I love, before I, that. but I'm a sucker for this setup. I don't want to sit into it. I know. I yeah. just want to see this story actually done again and, and, right. and the way I see it in my head from reading it. but It's um, just frustrating because if it's going to be done now, it's going to be all CGI and this movie has so many cool practical effects that yeah. it's like, it it just, it's not going to look good done mm-hmm. now. It's going it, to it's going to feel very fake. Unless, unless Robert Eggers does, Eggers does. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, or even like you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm pointing at that. Yeah, you would probably make it black and white too, but it would be really high contrast black and white. It'd probably I'm here be really for it. cool. Did you yeah. ever see there was a guy who made his own Call of Cthulhu uh, movie in black and white? I'm and it pretty was like, sure you shared that with me when we yeah, first started hanging out, yeah. Colin. Yeah. It's really, I mean, it's I think like the only version that's ever been filmed mm. of Call of Cthulhu. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you should you should check that out. Mm-hmm. Um, so. The, I guess the town has a secret. Paul uh, discovers this um, because uh, he 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 goes into the hotel and it's just the most disgusting place ever, right? <laughs> he's, he's supposed to be yeah. waiting for Barbara. She went to go uh, find the police, they tell her. Um, but it's just disgusting. And he uh, sees the townspeople. So what, who, what are we, what impression are we getting off of these folks mm-hmm. that are... They're all like cloaked like hooded and shuffling around Mm -hmm. like not human like yeah like kind of i don't want to say zombie but kind of kind of zombie they don't seem necessarily threatening because they don't seem very able-bodied they seem stupid but yet they're still (laughs) kind of a threat so that's interesting is this movie a zombie movie? Does it feel like a zombie? It is chase the approach movie? of a zombie movie, yeah, yeah, with a different skin on it. I think so. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's definitely but, the same flavor, but it also has a religious element to it too, which is interesting. So yeah, not enough in my opinion because it waits like, till the third act to yeah, really I do feel anything like with that. They could have hit that home a little mm-hmm. harder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that there is. Yeah. Well, 
hey, I don't know if that's just the layers that you give it. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, okay, first of all, you're going to make it, it's a chase movie, zombies, and, and you know, mm-hmm. it's not zombies in this mm-hmm. case. Uh, okay, so I guess to, to explain what they are, um, right. uh, he eventually encounters the old town drunk. Mm-hmm. Which is a guy named Ezekiel. But at this point, we've seen just like little glimpses, like the webbed hand priest, the gills, the gills on the the bellhop. That was a great reveal. That was he a just great reveal. turns around. Yeah. You see little gill and, like, lines. I could tell oh. by his neck. I was like, he's gonna have gills. Yeah. You can tell, <laughs> and he did, and it was great. Yeah. <laughs> that effects pretty good. Yeah, because when he's good. looking at you, you can't see him. Right. But, but when he, he turns, turns his head, head and they yep. open up, you know, it's yep. a good he's makeup. He's got this like kind of scaly postules like on his head. Yeah. But I could like you just see his neck. I'm like. There's something on his neck. Yeah. It's going to be gills. <laughs> so you're like, okay, fish people. Mm-hmm. But why are there fish people in this town? Well, we say fish people. They're mostly human mm-hmm. looking humanoid, right? Yeah. Uh, they're yeah. generally shrouded, as Holly mm-hmm. said, in like fisherman gear because mm-hmm. it's raining, right? Mm-hmm. So this is a clever way to keep them all. Uh, mostly hidden. Right. Yeah. Um, Although, but, why are they hiding from the rain? Don't they like it? Right. You'd think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like water. Um, mm. But they have, when we do see their faces, they generally have, like, uh, you know, makeup to make them look like they have wide staring eyes. Yeah. There was a scene that I, again, like, misinterpreted when I first saw it. And then I listened to a director's commentary and they're like explaining it. And I'm like, oh. The scene with the bellhop where he's got the lighter, uh, Paul's got the lighter Mm -hmm. and he's showing it and then it cuts back to Paul and he's like blinking a bunch and then opening his eyes is to tell the audience that the guy is not blinking. The priest never blinks. Okay, so you got got that. that, It's like they're always just staring. They never blink like a fish, right? I guess that's what they're going for. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, they always have these big bulbous eyes. Yeah, actually, Um, I did latch onto that one. Okay, you did get it. It went over my head. (laughs) Um, uh, So Ezekiel tells him the history of there's an info dump and an entertaining flashback scene. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, a nice little uh, transition, face over face transition <laughs> that Michaela loved. <laughs> I, I laughed transitioning this old bum that I can barely understand what the fuck he's saying. Enunciate, motherfucker! I can't understand. Well, that's the yeah. yeah. That is Francisco Rabal has been in a bunch of like a hundred over a hundred movies, yeah. right? Yeah, but. And this, I, I think, was his last screen role. And yeah. I think the uh, movie's they, dedicated yeah. to him at the end. Him. But unfortunately, this is, I guess, the thing when you make a Spanish uh, film and you're like, you know, we're going to actually have people uh, speaking in Spanish and using, they're not dubbed, mm-hmm. you know. There's the Italians. They would right. they always dub this stuff. This right. is why they did it. Because I can't understand half the stuff that the yeah. guy is saying, no. unfortunately. His English is not. Um, it's not good. Uh, it's not clear. Legible mm-hmm. enough. Or yeah. Distinct. Mm-hmm. But what so, is the? Uh, but did they did they purposely purposefully not um, have any subtitles for the other ones when they're speaking Spanish? Were we not supposed to know what they're saying? I think. Is, the, is that the thing? I think because the impression I get is if you're Paul, Paul doesn't understand Paul Spanish. Doesn't understand, and so yeah. we don't, you know, if you, I'm sorry, you know, if you don't understand Spanish in the audience, you don't know right. what, what they're saying. Yeah. So you're kind of put then in Paul's position. Okay. They're talking about you, mm-hmm. but you don't know what it was kind of they're annoying. Because <laughs> there's a lot of it. There's I, a lot yeah. of it. I was like, I really just want to know what they're saying. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, some of it, I got it. Like they some were of translating, it, translating, yeah. or like you say this or whatever. It's yeah. like okay, I get of, the general gist. Some of it gist. we can pick up on it for sure, but yeah. So what? What's the history of uh, Imboka? Right. So this it was a uh, a poor fishing town, a crumbling fishing town, down in its luck, not catching any fish, um, and as much as they prayed, they still weren't catching anything mm-hmm. until. One day, um, they seem to have gotten a blessing from the sea. It was not just an abundance of fish, but also gold. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, because his captain yeah. shows this up. His captain shows up. And he, in the story, had like come across some tribe, you know, like in some far off land where they did sacrifices. They were so he did the sacrifice. And it's like, but again, I didn't get any of this right, because <laughs> right. it's in Spanish and slash being told by someone who can't really speak English. Right. So I got nothing of this. 
<laughs> oh, okay. So he comes in and he's like, why pray to a God who doesn't answer your prayers when I Which can word? summon a yeah. God who will answer your prayers? And so right. he goes out on the reef and summons Dagon, mm-hmm. who uh-huh. apparently does show up. We get Dagon's point of view. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's clear right. either in the way, because mm-hmm. the budget, yeah. right? Right. They, they can't actually show this. So they use the camera on a crane to yeah. be uh, Dagon. And then gold washes up on the shore. Fish is abundant. And eventually they tear down all the quote unquote false idols mm-hmm. in the yeah. church and they kill everyone who, well, no. Which, okay, the scene of tearing down the false idols was fucking dope because these guys come in and there's like life size statues of all the saints and they are just whacking these yeah. statues apart. Just smashing like it's a rage ceramics. room. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God, that looks so satisfying. Like they're having so much fun just smashing this shit. And they kill the priest, the original, yeah. the, the Catholic priest or yeah. whatever. And they begin killing people. Um, when the gold and the fish dry up and so they realize they have to make sacrifices to Dagon in order to uh, keep the town Mm -hmm. in uh, the deity's good favor. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I guess, you know, and and Ezekiel is left alone because he drinks and he's crazy. So, you know, (laughs) he's not a worthy sacrifice. Right. Yeah. So he gets to live and tell the tale now as an old man. And so we're still going with like, this is all during a chase, right? Paul's chased out of the uh, hotel um, by hordes of fish people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, effective? Yeah. Effect, goofy? It's scary. I okay. The way they kind of like stumble around is creepy. Yeah. Like sometimes it's, like, it's comical, sometimes it's Yeah, creepy. like it's not scary to watch, but it's scary to think about how scary that would be. <laughs> yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. You're yeah. in such close quarters, I think. Yes. The yeah. way that they shoot it, it mm-hmm. you know, feels like, oh my God, like they are right there, you yeah. know? And like, um, It feels like he's just barely ahead of them for yeah. 40 minutes of this movie. Like a lot of close calls. It's a little stressful at yeah. times, yeah. I think that's a, the problem with like trying to sell like this idea. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, if you're trying to, uh, you know, and maybe why it ended up on the sci fi channel, why nobody would finance it. It's the mm-hmm. idea that, like, well, it's fish people. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. It's, <laughs> you know, it's a hard sell. I get it. I get it. But I mean, when you watch the end result, it's like, well, it is actually kind of tense. You yeah. Know, there's a, it's a horde of people trying to come in. <laughs> it doesn't matter right. if they're fish people or not. They look weird mm-hmm. and they are about to get him, you know, is the thing. Um, he tries to get a car because he's right. I'm going to get out of here. There's mm-hmm. only one car in Mboka and it's at this like uh, rich guy's house. Apparently the rich guy is uh, like, um, I think he's the town elder mm-hmm. and he's walking around like on crutches mayor or something. <laughs> right. Yeah. He's, they he's say important. He, he's the descendant of mm-hmm. uh, the, the captain. captain. Yeah. Okay. Because he's part of that family, uh, which I, I miss. It was like Calabar or something like that. Is he a descendant or is he the captain? I think you know, I said he was a descendant. Like I know they said that, but Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it was I think it was because later we we find out that um so I guess what's been going on here is uh part of their bargain, right, is that they give women to Dagon Dagon impregnates these women, right. and they have half human, half uh, deep one uh, children who are immortal. But they have to spend some time on Earth as like actual uh, uh, people. So right. he was young and handsome yeah. at the point, or like in the past. Is that like how like the Amish people they send out their eighteen year old to like, yeah. live in the world the and just decide yeah. if they want to come back? Yeah, like yeah. the same thing. You'll eventually turn into as as you as you age, you turn more and more uh, fishy, fishy, <laughs> and you will spend the eternity in the sea. If somebody doesn't stab you to death, apparently they're right. not like immortal that way, right. right? Right? It's just they will live forever as long as they're not killed by something else, right? Right? <laughs> so that makes them afraid of uh, death, I mm-hmm. guess, which which is a weird like in those scenes that feel like zombie scenes. Right. It's like they are afraid of being, you know, stabbed, hurt. Yeah. Or right. But also and like, like we were saying, not they're They don't all have the same fish qualities. No, which so is interesting. It's yeah. interesting. And I was wondering like, 
say you knew yeah. that in your future you were going to be a fish person, but you don't know like what type of fish person. It's like an X Men. Hey, you don't yeah. know what your you don't know what your mutation is going to be. Exactly. Yeah. That'd be really stressful. I know because like, like in your mind, I'm like, I want to be a mermaid. Right. But like, nah. You might be a tentacle mermaid. <laughs> yeah. 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 You might be like a puffer fish. Yeah. You exactly. Know? Like, yeah. Yeah. Which is weird because they all come from the same lineage. We're right. told right. the same right. father. I guess, right? Yeah. Ultimately, apparently, yeah. There is a domestic scene that Paul interrupts at one point. He, he is seeking refuge from the uh, the townsfolk. He climbs right. into a house yeah. that's flooded with water. Well, bef- before that, he he cl- he goes to the like the mayor, whoever's house, and he meets the girl he's been dreaming about. He, yeah, we yeah. haven't talked about that. Yes. That's right. This She's is real. a major, major yeah, plot point. Yeah, this is a big point. <laughs> <laughs> He's been having these like ongoing nightmares about mm-hmm. this like mermaid, right? And he keep, and even like daydreams, like visions, like in mm-hmm. the middle of the day and stuff. It's fi- like haunting him. Mm-hmm. And when he is running from the fish zombie people, he runs into this like mayor mansion, mm-hmm. and he ducks into a room, and there is his dream girl in bed. Just like waiting for him, and like she, she clearly knows who he is, right? Yeah, yeah. And then she's like, uh, like he, yeah, putting he, the moves. He can't resist her mm-hmm, until yeah. he discovers that underneath her clothes is um, squid legs, squid legs, squid, squid tentacles, squid legs. But like she's, instead of being a mermaid, she's like a squid mermaid, like yeah. instead of a fish mermaid. It's like literally gross. Instead of two legs, it's two squid tentacles. Yes, yeah. and the way she like scuttles on the floor she is scuttles. disgusting. <laughs> yeah, like the like I do kind of wish the sound design was amped up a little bit in this I movie. Have, yeah. Give me the of gross issues. squishes and stuff. I have a you lot know? of issues with the sound in general in this movie. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the the lack of music. Yeah, yeah. There's there's like a, a subtle score in a couple moments, but mm-hmm. for the most part, there's like no music in this movie. Right. There's like a a, a choir mm-hmm. doing like a a, a chant kind of thing, like a religious chant that mm-hmm. we hear a little bit. But I feel like the the score could have really been amped up to give this a yeah. lot more momentum. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. Yeah, mm-hmm. because there's so much. Of, I was actually I'm sitting there going like, okay, does it add to the tension if you're just watching him running around fleeing these people and there's no score? I don't think so. I think it takes away from it. I yeah, think, you need. I think I you think, need it. Yeah. yeah, and there were moments, um, dramatic moments that I thought, especially like the end. The end just kind of. Um, happens it just yeah. happens and the music is like okay that happened and mm-hmm. you're like you need like a big yeah crochet because this is a big moment right. you know yeah. right it is a moment but the music yeah. doesn't you say need, you need that mm-hmm. that emotional tenor to be to be audible you need, right. you need right. that yeah yeah the I whole movie you need it that's one of yeah. the big demerits of this movie For is sure. the, the score um or the use of score not so much mm-hmm. the parts that are that it it, it the stuff that it uses is it's just, okay. It's, it's very little score. Yeah. Like, very felt, little. It felt like there was hardly any score. I can't hear half the dialogue. There's no great sound effects. Like, yeah, F's yeah. across the board on Absolutely. sound design. Like, mm-hmm. Which is too bad because the other areas are really well done, I feel like. Yeah. But yeah, it just clearly money ran out for that. It, you know? take, it just, for me, it takes away so much it from does. this movie. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. does. Yeah. There you go, a project. Rescore Dagon. Uh, oh, a new, new sound mix. Hell and yeah. uh, we're going to dub Francisco Rabal. Please, new, yes. someone dub our, that bitch. Yes. And I'm going to put in squishes and gross wet sounds everywhere yeah. I can. Yeah. Oh, God. it should be making me revolt from the sounds alone. You know, yeah. two tentacle legs slopping across the floor should be disgusting. It should be. Yeah, I'm thinking yeah. of like when when Sean and I went to see the substance, and in the first like three minutes of the movie, I was already like, the sound alone in this movie is going to gross me the fuck out. Yeah, and I love it. And I, everyone told me to see that in theaters because of the sound. The design. sound is and yeah. amazing. Yeah, 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 it's true. It's true. Like before the credits are even over, yeah. you're like, oh my god, this sound, sound is going to ruin yeah. me. Yeah. It's going to be great. Well, I did like the the like the vocalization for the townspeople in this yeah. mm-hmm. that was the only yeah. like mark i would give like and in- was was one of them the um oh god i'm gonna totally space out the the people from uh star wars god damn it in in new hope they make the ooh, ooh sound it was, oh, it, the, oh. That's, Ra- the tuscan raiders yes yeah. was it the same one it sounded like the same yeah. one <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. It sounded like the same one. Yeah. 
But um, yeah, but yeah, overall, they do have saying, some sound effects for the townspeople. Yeah, and that that we like. But we're saying uh, other like sound phantom, effects. There's like phantom like whale noises. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, and the woman who uh, plays this character, the not the not mermaid. Uh, Macarena Gomez has gone she on to do looks other like stuff. An anime character. She looks like I thought that maybe it was Barbara Steele. They were. She going looks after. a lot like Bar. Yeah, I was like, is this like great value, Barbara Steele? Yeah. that's what it feels like. like. Cast her Even the eye makeup, they try to do the same. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, but she has gone on. She was in um, Alex uh, Alex de Igl- uh, Iglesias uh, mm-hmm. movies, uh, Witching and Bitching. If you've oh, seen gotcha! That. I've heard yeah. of that. Yeah, Lovely. yeah. I think she was in there's something else that I saw. Mm-hmm. She's still working in, gotcha. in uh, movies. Um, so Paul tries to get away. Uh, the domestic incident where basically right. he mm-hmm. comes in. He h- tries to hide in a. Um, it, it's like a father and son. The son is yeah. a, a, like a little like 10 year old kid. Fuck this kid, man. <laughs> One of the most annoying kids in cinema history yeah. right here. Because he's like, he's here. He's here. He's here. Yeah. Papa, come and get him or yeah. whatever he's saying. Yeah. And uh, Papa is like a tentacle monster. With shark teeth. Like, yeah. I'm crazy. Shark I'm teeth. confused. Like, where did this kid come from? And what? Like, he doesn't stop talking. Paul. Like, Busted into his house. No, 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 no. I mean, like, what? This is like a human child. Yeah, he doesn't yeah, have any start like. Out, they start out human, and, and is it as a you puberty older, thing? Yeah, you hit puberty you and you get gills. More okay, so as, when yeah. you age. two fish people fall in love, yes, they, <laughs> and they, they love each other very much. They yes. love each other very much, yeah. and they make a baby. Yes, it's a human baby and Until grows it, up to be a fish uh, person. I think, hits, is that what we're saying? Yeah. Nope. I think what we're, I think what's happening, right, as it is explained <laughs> to us in the, because Paul's okay. eventually knocked out and he uh, wakes up in captivity. Yeah. And with, surprise, Barbara's alive. Yep. Oh, I was about to be real mad because I thought this movie was about to end with like, and it was all a dream. And I was about to be like, fuck this movie. Like, thank God it didn't. Okay. Like the boat crashed and you passed out. Yeah. Yeah. That's, mm, like, that's no. where I thought it was going. Well, I think what's happening is okay. any uh, woman who comes in proximity to the town, they kidnap. Uh-huh. And they offer her to Dagon, mm-hmm. right. who impregnates her, and so all of these are children of Dagon. Okay, but then, but you said that they have to like go abroad to like well, live that, life. Well, uh, in the town, they're, they're living oh, in the town. They don't all leave the island or the town. They have to leave. They they, they go abroad from the ocean to mm. to land. Oh, not, okay, not, not, okay. You know, yeah, they just Paul just like, happens to be one that got away. He mm-hmm. got away. Yeah, okay, his he's mother, like Micah Monroe in Long Legs. Got yeah, it. Got his it. mom was able to escape and had okay. him somewhere else, mm-hmm. so he doesn't know that he's supposed to. Be. Oh, surprise! Mm-hmm. That's right. That's what's actually happening. Oh, okay, here. that makes sense. That makes sense. Um. So. Uh. Yeah. So then, you know, there's a scene because all these the folks are in captivity where he, dr- where he tries to drown him in a gross toilet. Yeah, that was oh, fucking gross. Okay. Oh, in the house that was you're fucking saying, yeah. gross. Uh, Because the toilet on the outside got a bunch of shit stains. It's so Um, gross. And looks like it's shit water. But I almost like the the zag. I like the way they zagged on this scene. And and like fish in the toilet. There's like, but they look like there was like salamanders. They're like salamanders. salamanders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And so like it's not shit water. It's like animals are living in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like you guys ever smelled a dirty fish tank? Oh, they're disgusting. This movie reeks of mold. Dirty fish tank. Gross. Yeah, it's it's just yeah. (laughs) But I did. I did think it was funny. Yes, I did think it was funny that he like pull that the fish monster pulls him over to the toilet to try to drown him there when they're literally standing in four feet of water. He wanted to yeah. add insult to like, injury. He's was like, funny. I'm gonna drown you in the fucking like, toilet. Like, like, I could just push you down to the ground, yeah. but I'm gonna give you a swirly. Yeah, yes. <laughs> like, you nerd, yeah. 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 Nerd, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gross. Yeah. And my pets live in this toilet. Right. Let's fucking deal with yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> well, my salamanders. Yeah. I guess in captivity, uh, later when Paul's uh, knocked out and wakes up with uh, Barbara, Vicky. Vicky has yeah. been impregnated and uh, she kills herself, I guess, mm-hmm. rather than uh, uh, give birth to. Uh, Understandable. The, the yeah, thing. no, I, I, I get that. Mm-hmm. And they take. Uh, She'd Ezekiel. rather die than have that baby. Yeah. I understand yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand that. And this is what we know is uh, is ahead for Barbara, unfortunately, who yeah. is eventually going to be strung up naked over a pit, and they will summon Dagon. But right. before that happens... 
There's a scene. This is not in the book. So this is Stuart Gordon. Like I didn't think this was. Yeah, the and pushing it as far. So if you see this, this movie, this, this is going to be the scene is, that you remember. This is the scene that sticks Boy. with you. Yeah, this was gross. I don't understand the reasoning for it. Right. No. That's what I was going to say. There why, isn't okay. one. So it we seems need to talk like. about because earlier on, Paul, there's a scene where Paul is like running from the zombies and he's hiding in like a, um, um, like a animal captivity like a like a farm stable situation mm -hmm. but instead of there are like pig skins there's pigs yeah. but then there's like human skins yes and one of them is howard so mm -hmm. that's what we found out that higher that howard died but then later on we see them from this captivity they are taken to this like skinning area and I don't understand why they're skinning people. Yeah, why? That's what I don't understand. Okay, this is all I got. Okay. And so you can Let's shoot me okay. down, but um, because all of them, when they actually go to the ritual chamber where Barbara will be suspended over the Oh, that's Dagon right. They're pit. wearing the skins. They wear the skins. So it's so part of their ritual? To, be, to wear a human, to wear a human face, a man's mm -hmm. face, like in front of Dagon. I don't, it, it doesn't like, make any yeah, damn no, is sense. Is it like symbolic? So like Dagon like we, like wears a human when he like impregnates the woman, I and don't know. so they're like mimicking that. Yeah. Like it, I, it's a, it doesn't make sense to me. It's a stretch, but basically, it gives Stuart Gordon the opportunity to stage a scene in which a guy is skinned alive. Ezekiel, yeah, poor, poor old Ezekiel. guy. This made me a little <laughs> nauseous. This was really yeah. gross it, because because yeah. he's skinned alive. Yeah, and oh, he's and it's very effective. He's skinned alive, meaning he slit at the throat, and then they peel his face up, starting from the bottom of his neck over the top of his head while he's like saying the lord's prayer get, it's disturbing the tug to get it off his oh. head made me like yeah black out a little bit almost i i was like oh that boy i can't really watch gross. much more of this yeah yeah um because did not expect this in my fish people movie right yeah <laughs> i think that's part of his context right like yeah, if yeah. i was signing up for like a a skinning people movie i'd be like like yeah. you know well here yeah. we go you know yeah. um like hunter hunter that movie came out a couple years ago wasn't so surprising that there was things like that in it but this movie it's like i thought we were watching shambling squid people you right, know yeah. and now i got degloving whole humans for some reason <laughs> yeah i know yeah. I think it is. I think that's what it is. You know, going back to what we said about Stuart Gordon, he realized that if you push the limit and you push the boundaries of taste, then people will remember you. Oh, absolutely. You know? So he's like, okay, that's Not what wrong. I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And it works, mm -hmm. but it does also seem extremely gratuitous. I thought it's gratuitous because it's a fish people movie. Yeah. And you're like, why are we skinning people alive? It feels like and, a gimmick. Yeah. And I don't quite you know i think and, the, yeah because i'm trying to make like connect the dots and it's just like anything i come up with is a reach yeah the like, rationale well, is yeah, it's, it's a like, ritual right it's like ritual. oh are they like like mimicking like you know deboning a fish like then this is their way sure. of doing that to humans like there's any way you slice it, it's it's like a reach mm -hmm. it just doesn't really connect it is effective and gross. It's though. very so, gross and yeah. effective. There you yeah, go. For sure. <laughs> yeah. And then... The fact um, that he's alive while they're doing it and he's like talking. And it looks great. It looks really good. Yeah. That's why I'm like, how does this look so good? And some, some of the other stuff just doesn't. But, yeah. you know, I guess... Some of the practical the like uh, makeups I mm -hmm. thought looked okay. Yeah. It's the CG... You know that ultimately fails the right. most because uh, yeah, it's it's uh, early gen CG yeah. and it doesn't look good, mm -hmm. and so it kind of detracts unfortunately from the experience. Yeah. But I do like in the scene that Paul is finally because Paul's really annoying. Yes, throughout very. most of this movie, horrible protagonist, really honestly. really horrible. Um, but this is like the moment where he kind of like kind of like nuts up a little bit, mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's like, just do it, right? <laughs> um. So yeah, they like go to skin him, but then he's saved by the mermaid girl, yeah, the prin princess mm -hmm. or whatever. But it turns out that she know, priestess something. yeah, because she be you know because he loves Barbara, she takes it out on like carving uh, runes or something, or I don't know. She's just cutting her before they string her up yeah. so the blood can drop drip into the. Uh, That's uh, how they summon mm -hmm. yeah, Dagon, Dagon. I guess. So Dagon They're chum in the water. Yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of Ezra, God, so it, you got to imagine an alternate version of this movie, right? 
if it was made in the late 80s or 90s, would have had Jeffrey Combs and Barbara Crampton for sure. probably it. in it. Yeah. You know, yeah, <laughs> it's for like, sure. damn it, <laughs> that we missed that version right. yeah. of the movie. <clears throat> um, oh, well. So, uh, Dagon appears in one shot. Um, and I guess it's just to give an impression that, okay, it's huge. Mm -hmm. It's some kind of gigantic squid type thing. Yeah. It's not Cthulhu. No. Although I do appreciate any movie that. It's kind of Kraken-ish. Yeah, it is. I I like it. It's kind of Kraken-ish. We don't get a A little bit. Big glimpse at it, but, you know, it comes up so fast. It's like two or three seconds. Yeah. You actually see this thing. But I do appreciate any movie that actually turns the, uh, the chant uh, yeah, yeah, Cthulhu Photogon mm-hmm. into like yeah. there's a bunch of you know the the worshippers are all chanting it. Mm-hmm. It's on the soundtrack as a choir piece. Right. Never yeah. thought I would see the day, but here we right. are. But again, in on the soundtrack as a choir piece, like in the credits. Yeah, I could. I think used... they're chanting it through the movie, but I know they are. But it's, it's not... so quiet and not prominent. Yeah. Just give me more, be right? Be give me more of it. Be, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so, um. Barbara is yeah. impregnated by the the god mm-hmm. thing, mm-hmm. and she's like, "Kill me, Paul!" Yeah, like, I yeah, can't kill you. Paul mm-hmm. shows up to save her, but then uh, her uh, uh, Dagon like wraps his tentacles around her and pulls her down and rips her, her arms off. Her yeah. arms are still holding on to the thing. <laughs> oh my Shackled god, what's pretty the, awesome? Yeah. The way the camera panned up to real ve- reveal that was amazing. That was pretty yeah. loved it. That's pretty great. Like, ooh. Yep. And Paul, despondent, says, fine, fuck you all. Oh, oh, well, he finds out. I think this is the big reveal, right? That mm-hmm. uh, the uh, old guy um, walking around the crutches of mm-hmm. the mayor mm-hmm. is like, Paul, you're you're my son. You know, mm-hmm. this is where he finds this out. And in horror. Right. So that means that the, the woman of his dreams is his sister. Right. Mm-hmm. And she's even like. I'm your half sister, but I'm going to be your lover. And yeah, it's like, oh, for oh, well, this just gets here. worse yeah, and worse. Yeah. yeah. So he's like, fuck this. He covers himself in knowing finally, because mm-hmm. I mean, the guy, it's an anxious guy. He doesn't want to die yeah. until finally, I think at this point in the movie, he's like, no I reason to live. Yeah. Yeah. Because Michaela and I surmised we would have given up a long time ago. Oh, yeah. I, I said something <laughs> in like the second act. I was like, at what point do you just stop yeah, that running I'm and just, just say, okay, like, I'm right, tired of this. this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Because he doesn't want to have his face ripped off yeah. by fish people. Right. Although he does see succumb to that or, you know, like basically do it. You know, mm-hmm. he's, yeah. he's ready to give in. Um, so at the end, he douses himself in gasoline, lights himself on fire. The uh, princess, uh, mm-hmm. priestess, uh, lunges at him and knocks him down the well. Mm-hmm. And so they end up in the ocean. And it turns out that even though he's horribly burned, he's not going to die. Why? No, and we see all his skin like peeling, like uh-huh. charred skin flaking off underwater, which is a gross effect I didn't uh-huh. know could be possible. Yeah, like, that was gross. <laughs> yeah, wow. Wow, burned skin flake, flaking off underwater. Never thought I'd yeah. see it. But how come he didn't die underwater? He didn't drown. Because he's he's the, becoming a fish person. Yeah, he's, he's got so these yeah. bruises oh, yeah. that we've seen bruises, on him. Were gills. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were gills forming. Yep. And all of a sudden they open up yep. and bleed a little bit as yeah. like new Oof. wounds. Oh. And he can breathe underwater. Yep. And she's all happy, and he's like, "What?" He's and like, "I'm a charred like, corpse, bitch. This yeah. is not how I want to live." Yeah, and he's like, Ugh. "Yeah, yeah, can't even kill myself, right?" Yeah. And so they swim down into the dark abyss and will live forever. Mm-hmm. Okay, but this would have been so much better if they had swam by his laptop laying. Oh the my god! Yes. Yeah. Oh, I, been... and it's on, and you see the stock market just crash. That, that would have been be amazing. So great. Oh <laughs> you see a big red arrow, just like brown. Yeah. yeah. Does he heal up down there? Uh, probably. Seems like it. You know, I yeah. mean, I assume he's going to change into a fish person at yeah. some point. That's right. probably, does, his skin's come off. He's going to have scales. He's fine. Yep. Yeah. He's fine. Okay. Yeah. So he's just expediting uh, the process, probably. Yeah. yeah. So we're saying it's a happy ending. It's like burning the crop. <laughs> I mean, it's the best he could hope for, I think. Yeah. Know? I like, mean, he's just like, well, this is it. Yeah. This yeah. is my life yeah. now. Yeah. I get to live uh, forever. Yeah. In yeah. glory and... As long as no one tries to stab me, then yeah. I love forever. Yeah. Yeah. So who would just, under the sea? Well, I suppose yeah. you can make enemies. Fucking my yeah. sister. 
Yeah. Yep. There you it's go. It's going to be grand. And how mm-hmm. they're going to do it, I don't know. There's a lot of like things that are slither and. Yep. You know. Right. Because like, she's like got the tentacle legs. <laughs> and, and what's he going to have? Right. Yeah. How are they going to make this work? I don't know. Whatever. Good luck to him. You know? <sighs> Fish love. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, it's uh, Dagon. Thank you very much for sticking with us. We are going to go around the table and individually tell you what we thought of it and whether we would recommend it to you. But first, we're going to answer some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. He sprouted gills a couple decades ago, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And like, before had, I joined the show, he, he had, had gills. tentacles, but they fell off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He doesn't, he, is, he doesn't take good care of them, you know? Mm-mm. He's always smelled like that. Yeah. yeah. Dirty yeah. fish it's, tank smell. It's pretty gross. Yeah. 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 Um, we should let the good folks at home know how they can participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Night Freak Show. On X. At Sat Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on threads or Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show about tonight's movie. Dagon G Money writes in and says, G Money. This is like an anime. Let's see. Uh, yeah. 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 He says, This is like an anime with the gore and tentacles. The skin to live scene was memorable, and the Cthulhu massacre at the end was great, too. Anything Yuzna and Gordon produced found its way to Sci Fi, the channel, mm-hmm. and my TV growing up. Man, I miss my gooey, slimy, bloody, head-bobbing puppets in my horror. (laughs) Yeah, I agree. Nothing's gooey anymore because it's all digital, so there's no goo. Yeah, no goo. The the goo doesn't seem... Yeah, yeah. yeah, see see the the substance. See the substance for goo, but... There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Michael Whitaker writes in and says, I remember the heavy advertising push when this movie aired on Sci-Fi Channel Mm. back when it was the Sci-Fi Channel. Yes, Mm -hmm. not Uh, Sifi. Not Sifi. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the Sifi Channel. (laughs) They seem really convinced I should have heard of this movie and that airing it was a big deal. Mm -hmm. I want to say it was probably part of a whole HP Lovecraft film marathon that maybe even might have been the weekend i first saw reanimator the only thing i cool. really remember about dagon is everything looked damp yeah <laughs> yeah damp is, you, you remembered the correct uh, movie yeah soaked damp yep. is soaked. an understatement yep. yeah yeah this movie sloshed mm-hmm. uh last week we watched a movie called the purge anarchy yeah. joshua owens writes in and says i think frank grillo would have made a great Punisher. He's one of my favorite action actors. He has a movie out called Boss Level, and it's a great movie. I'd highly recommend checking it out. All right. I'm curious. Um, Kayla's our resident. Frank yeah, Kilo. I'll go. I'll go see it. I'll yeah, go, she's I'll gonna go, go check it, out yeah. his other. Apparently, stuff. it's yeah. a comedy. Uh, oh well, that's so there surprising. You go. Frank Grillo <laughs> does uh, action comedy. Boss <laughs> Level. We'll see if I'll I'll determine if it's a comedy. How about <laughs> that? <laughs> I will. I'll be the one to <laughs> see how funny um, it is. Uh, Kylie Sanchez was also in that movie. So Richard Kratzer says a perfect getaway would be a good choice for the Saturday Night Freak Show. It's one of Chris Hemsworth's mm-hmm. Hemsworth's mm. first U.S. flicks and a great performance by Timothy Oliphant, Stephen Zahn, Neil Jovovich, Marley okay. Shelton, and Kylie San- Sanchez. Unless you all have already done it. Looking back, I can't see if it's been covered no, or not. No, I had that on my it. list when I did the vacation series la- last summer, and then I replaced it with something else last minute. I don't remember so, we did the ruins it, and all and that. And oh, fantasy, like, I- fantasy is coming Island. Up yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the week before that, we did a movie called Tales from the Dark Side. Mm-hmm. Carson Snar says the gargoyle at the end was epic creature design. Mm-hmm. Uh, Travis Legler says, I'm not going to lie, when she turned into the gargoyle, I did want the guy to just wear any and all angst on his face and say no, mm-hmm. and then yell, Giver! <laughs> Everybody sees monsters in rubber suits as a Giver. The Giver. Yeah, Giver was a huge, huge yeah. deal. Around people, these parts, it somewhere. is somewhere. <laughs> uh, Teresa Ann says Ray Don Chong is Tommy Chong's daughter. Yes, wow, we're sorry, okay. we missed that. Yeah, we brought it up last week, we missed it on the show. Yes. We didn't do our research. Uh, yes. I knew that at one point, but then yep. forgot about it. Apologies. Always Action happy dude to see her. Mm-hmm. says, I really miss the days. Anthology horror movies and Tales from Dark Side. The movie is one of the better ones, mm-hmm. second only to the original Creep Show. It's certainly better than the pile of sewer slop known as Creep Show 2. Ray Don <laughs> Chong 
is comedian Tommy Chong's daughter. Mm -hmm. She's an underrated, lovely actor, and she was great in the third story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Andrew so Paulson Kirk says, you always tie Igor's appearance to the movie in question somehow. I'm wondering if you think of this banter beforehand or you do you just ad lib it in the moment. Either way, thanks for continuing to commit to the bit. We all panically look at each other waiting for someone to say something and then something <laughs> happens. Uh, there are some episodes you can listen to where you hear me say, I got nothing. Yeah, yeah I don't yeah, have yeah, anything. Yeah. yeah. We're so. just like spent on whatever we've just watched. Yes, yes. <laughs> but we have built up a character for oh, Igor yeah. over yes. the years. Yeah. He he takes many forms. Yeah. You know? he, and really he, does. he lives right yeah. behind that wall. Colin's yeah. got a little like door for him. Yep. You know, like cartoons when you see mice have the little cutout and the yeah, baseboards. Yeah. Colin's got like yeah. that for Igor. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. not gonna lie, there's like a little spot on Colin's wall that I've always like pictured that that's, that's the, door. the Igor slot. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, he's back there. That's yeah. what I've yeah. always yeah. been like, that's Igor's door. Oh, yeah. Comes out, <laughs> gives us the mail, yep. and he heads back. Scuttles back in there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Well, thank you very much, mm -hmm. uh, each of you, for writing, and we really appreciate it. Yeah. And now we're going to tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, Dagon, starting with Michaela. <laughs> Shocker. Yeah. I know. Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what did I think of Dagon, huh? Uh, yeah, I knew nothing about this other than Colin said Stuart Gordon fish people, and I was like, that's all I need. I'm in. You know, uh, Stuart Gordon sets a level of grossness. Um, it's a good meter, right? Like yeah. we we could have a level of like grotesquery in movies and put we should do yeah. that. <gasps> this is a fun side project for us <laughs> to, to, to rank the grotesquery of movies. You know, oh, what is it on the grotesquery scale? Is it a you know Brian Yuzno or is it a, I don't know what the opposite would be? Uh, probably M Night Shyamalan because there's nothing gross in his movies. Oh, that's true. um. Wait for end of the year episode to hear more about that. Uh, yeah, Hen and Lauder's like pretty hot. I would yeah. like the difference between Hen and Lauder and Stuart, Gor Stuart Gordon is budget, right? Yeah. That's it, right? Like I think so. Yeah. Like because Hen and Lauder would do all these same things uh -huh. if he had the money, right? For sure. uh, and if he was willing to shoot anywhere other than New York, uh, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I was definitely thinking of Hen and Lauder a little bit tonight too, yeah. especially because they both do comedy and gross at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I'm always down to try on an HP Lovecraft adaptation and see how it feels. Um, and it's interesting how varying the adaptations are based on who does them. I I really enjoyed this. It, it Its pace really surprised me. I was surprised how quickly it jumped into the plot and then it was literally a chase movie for so long. Uh, it has some plot holes, has some logic problems we talked about, but the special effects are so cool and so mm -hmm. interesting and so unique. Like I like seeing these aquatic monsters with shark teeth. Um, I love just seeing an aquatic m horror movie that isn't just like our ship is stuck and we're going to get attacked by something because mm -hmm. I'm so tired of seeing that. Like... We get it. We get it. Like, it's the same thing as Alien. It's just underwater. Like, mm -hmm. do something different. And this is different. And I like the weird religions, religious stuff. All their, like, kind of, we didn't really talk about it, but, like, their, like, religious outfits and their gear and stuff is really interesting. Yeah. It's all gold and dramatic. And mm -hmm. I love pageantry. It kind of reminded like me that. of, like, Flash Gordon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was really into that. Um, kind of surprised I haven't heard much about this movie. I'm so I'm surprised I haven't even heard it like mentioned in like horror circles on the internet and like a cult following. But um yeah, I really enjoyed it and I thought I think there's a lot to gain from it, uh, warts and all. Um if I'm gonna make an aquatic horror movie nowadays, I feel like we should when we we're talking about squid movies, right? Mm -hmm. We should make a movie where a squid is like plucked from the ocean and put in like a sea world situation and then it turns into a slasher movie where the squid escapes and picks off all the people oh, working God, at the yes. sea world one by one. Yeah. yeah, hell yeah. Because I've seen I've seen different things online where they're like putting out like uh like um warnings being like, Oh, the octopus got loose again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And like it just it's figuring out complicated doors and fitting this. under crevices. Yeah. yeah, and it's like it's like a cat and mouse movie, but yeah. all the all the Sea World staff and it's are like getting coming picked after off. like the corrupt people. Yeah, behind, like, the yes. shitty Sea World yes. stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm it would be really that. easy to get behind supporting the squid. It would be interesting. Yeah. So that's cocaine what I want. squid. Yeah. No. Too far? I mean, far. they would I just, be... It's not necessary. It's they're not so, necessary. They're so smart, they yeah. don't need the cocaine, but... They don't need it. Um, but imagine if they did. Yeah, but imagine if they did, <laughs> yeah. Um, that's what I want. I, I, I liked Dagon. I had a good time with it. I was pleasantly surprised by it. Holly, what'd you think? Um, I was really torn on this one because, to be honest, I wasn't on board with it until probably 
the end of second act, early third act. I thought that the first part of this movie was just, well, you said like the Paul, the main guy is insufferable. Oh, he's, he's very annoying. annoying. Yeah. He's very annoying. Yep. And he stays that way for a good chunk of the movie. Probably like two thirds of this movie. He's that annoying. Um, and they do take a long time to get to the fun stuff. Um, the third act is, is solid. It's, it's gross. It's weird. There, that's where everything's happening. I'm good with the third act. It's, the end, the end is a little weird. Like, like we said, it just kind of happens. Um, I do have a problem with that. And I really am affected by the lack of music and, and um, score in this movie and sound effects, as we were saying. I'm very torn on it because I was really not on board until the third act. And I was kind of bored for part of it in the beginning. I'm really torn right now. I have to, I don't know, I have to keep talking about it. Follow your heart. I yeah. know, I know. Because like, they really did have me at the end. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, this is cool. Like, I'm into it. The skinning scene was absolutely disgusting. Oh, my God. I wish they would have done more with the religious stuff. Mm-hmm. I think that would have been really cool. And that always pulls me in like like a weird fish religion. Hell yeah. We right. never see that. Give me more of that. I don't need to see as much of Paul running around trying to figure out what's going on. Right. Give me more fish religion. <laughs> right. <sighs> fair, fair cruise, Yeah. I yeah. I feel like I feel like it's not for me. So it's it's I'm I'm gonna pass because it's not for me, but it's not a hard pass. Mm-hmm. Because like I said, I did like a lot of the third act. There's just a lot missing that didn't make it as enjoyable for me. Like I don't think I would watch it again. So I have to pass just based on that. But I can see why other people would watch it. Mm-hmm. I have to go with that. Okay, Colin. I waited for this movie for like 20 years because <laughs> I have read the original story. Like I said, it is one of my favorite. It's my favorite H.P. Lovecraft mm-hmm. story. So you're like, I want to see an adaptation of it. It also kind of puts you in a position where there's stuff I want to see. There's an atmosphere I want. This movie is going to be shot in Spain, so it's not going to have it, you know, just based on it. So it's not a straight adaptation of the story. The negatives are, I think, I agree with you, the sound design misses the mark, uh, mostly in the score department. Um, I think the casting, uh, yeah, I didn't like uh, the lead guy, you know? And then we're going to spend the entire movie with him, and then it becomes an action thing, and it's a physical Mm -hmm. performance, and it's like, okay, I get that he's just running, 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 narrowly escaping and trying to survive. And I get, you know, he's trying to save his uh, girlfriend. It's like, okay. Um, But on the positives, um, it has a weirdness um, that makes it kind of unique. It has, you know, I mean, the idea of, uh, you know, uh, fish people running around in in a town. Uh, These are like the interlopers coming into this town. It's like you do kind of get the idea that they, you know, uh, during the day, their day to day life is just kind of like, right. <laughs> you know, yeah. shoveling stuff and like, you know, they, they hang around with each other and there's a person comes in. It's like, oh, we have to sacrifice them <laughs> to Dagon. Um, the atmosphere, uh, They're fishing for people. Yeah. Even though it's a low budget, I think there's enough of a budget to, uh, pull off. Like it has this nice rain soaked, smelly, moldy, you know, um, uh, crustacean uh, atmosphere. Uh, this, because I like the story so much, I sit there and go like, okay, I was desperate for an adaptation. This is the best one I got. I think there's several others out there that kind of approach it here or there, but they're even more, you know, like low budget. So this is the adaptation of uh, Shadow Over Innsmouth for, uh, that, that we have. Um I did actually bring it to the freak show tonight because it was put back on my radar. There was a, a Blu-ray release. Um, cool. I can't remember if it was one of those Vestron, you know, releases mm. that uh, came out a little while ago. But a guy at work who younger, younger guy at work, like mentioned Dagon, and mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, Dagon, like, cool. you know, so somebody out there is still discovering the movie, right? Um, and uh, yeah, I thought the the skinning scene was gratuitous, but you'll remember it, so it's effective. Mm-hmm. Um, 
There's things I would have done. Did you have that moment where you're like, no one's talked about Dagon in 34 years? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. So now we're going to talk about Dagon. Apparently it's out there, you know, Mm -hmm. somewhere. People Mm -hmm. know about it. Now, because you've listened to the show, you know about it. Um, Would I recommend it? Uh, Yeah, I think it's a curiosity. Uh, I, I, it's just, you know, is it a good movie? Um, I sit there uh kind of mourning the movie that w- would have been made in like 1988 you right. know the Stuart gordon in 1988 when he was at you know kind of the peak of his you know come probably like the, at you know of his fame you're so like, emo you're like i watched the movie that could have been yeah the movie that could have been <laughs> <coughs> but um i enjoyed this one enough uh what does it say here is this uh, uh yeah Anthony Timpone, Fangoria Magazine. It's Gordon's best film since Reanimator. I don't know about that. I enjoyed yeah, I Dagon. Yeah. I don't know about that. I think you should check it out. You should read the original story. Actually, the best adaptation of this story <clears throat> is a... Um, so there's there's a Call of Cthulhu uh, video, uh, uh, card game mm-hmm. and board game. And there's a video game called Call of Cthulhu Dark Corners of the Earth that was made for the original Xbox, right? Mm -hmm. And it incorporates all of these HP Lovecraft story. I mean, it's like when you look at it, you're like, that is the best adaptation. They incorporated scenes and uh, themes from across his his works into this one thing. But the uh, general plot of it is... The Shadow of Rinsmith. So you're actually in the budget free version where they could build anything they want, you cool. know, in CG and That's you're walking cool. around mm-hmm. in the in the town of Innsmouth. Mm-hmm. And I mean it does uh stick pretty close to the source material and that and then it goes further and and incorporates some stuff from other uh Lovecraft works, but that's actually the best adaptation of the story so far. I would recommend this. So uh that's uh, uh I would say check it out. So we got two, four, one against. Not a mandatory watch. Dagon. Oh, Dagon. Uh, actual um, mentioned in the Bible. I was going to say that's cool. in the Bible somewhere. Yeah, it yeah. was a Hebrew word for a, de- a Sumerian deity, deity. Yeah. That I was trying to track it back, like because he's known as a fish god. Yeah. But they think that is something that happened over the years. In the translation of it, I right. think the, I don't think the Sumerian Dagon was a fish god. Mm-hmm. He became that, I right. think, uh, over the years. Maybe okay. it was a god that just like blessed him with fish. Mm-hmm. Maybe, yeah. Who so knows? There you go. It's the Bible, right? Who knows? <laughs> it's a lot of crap in there. <laughs> so, bam! That's it. There Next it week, we're gonna watch a movie that's chosen by Sean. Is there? A proxy for Sean here this evening. Uh, there is uh, <laughs> Senator Fuca. Uh, <laughs> I've been chosen as a proxy for Senator Tyler. Uh, we will be watching Stir of Echoes next week. Oh, oh yeah, okay. long time coming. I feel like yeah, yeah. yeah. it is a long yes. time coming. I know, and that's right? such a yeah. Sean pick. It this is, is a very Sean like pick. These weird, like you sit there and you're like, it feels like we did that one yep, before, but yep. did we? I I am just the proxy. Okay, all right. <laughs> I should we speak double to check? We should probably yeah. double check it. But yeah. I don't know. I mean, we've gotten to that point where we've watched so many movies. I know. That Over six hundred episodes, folks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that, yeah it's like uh, okay. So yeah. Stir of Echoes uh, with Kevin Bacon next mm-hmm. week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.